On this day, January 22nd, in Led Zeppelin history, nineteen seventy-three, Zeppelin played a show at the Refectory, at the Refectory in Southampton, Essex, England. Hang on a second here. I got to get to the bottom. I always think of um, uh, that movie with Jamie Lee Curtis and John Cleese, where. Uh, Kevin Klein is such like a hard on for like the English people. <laughs> He's like you, or you're like asshole. Anyway, anyway. England, or he's like he's mocking the poor. You know, I, I don't want him mocking any English people, but it is funny in the movie though. I will say. All right, here it is. Twenty-two January nineteen seventy-three. The old refract re. Ref Refactory Student Union Building, Southampton University, Southampton, oh, not Essex, Hampshire. I'm sorry, I'm a rat. 22 January 1973, the old Refactory Student Union Building, Southampton University, Southampton, Hampshire. This intimate concert was recorded using the Rolling Stones mobile studio with the view of releasing it as a live album later in the year. Now, we know, obviously, later they recorded um, a couple of the, you know, the New York stuff. And I think they even recorded the, um, I wonder if they, he recorded the Baltimore and Pittsburgh shows, too, Jimmy Page. Anyway, this would be great. Now, this might be floating around. I should know this because I do have a bunch of uh, my bootlegs floating around here that I haven't heard for a long time. But if Jimmy Page released this show January 22nd, which is right now, January 22nd, 2018, but, oh, my God, man. That's 45 years ago. So 45 years ago today was this show at the refactory, okay? And so check this out. <clears throat> Listen. This is where I picked it up. This intimate concert was recorded using the, Mo the Rolling Stones mobile studio with the view of releasing a live album later in the year. It never happened, and when various live concerts were digitized for How the West Was Won, we remember that, of course, the How the West Re Was Won release, Southampton was rejected in favor of the Los Angeles and Long Beach shows, as we know. Although... The Mellotron from Stairway to Heaven was used from this show as a substitute for the Hammond organ. I do wish Paige, you know, I noticed in the past, few, you know, every subsequent remastering, Paige um, has been changing not just the, rem let's say the s physical sound, right? Like what we hear, the oral, A-U-R-A-L, Ness of it, but he's also been p <laughs> building different, building different mixes. For like, if the song remains the same. When you listen to the latest remaster, I mean, there's stuff in there that is from different nights or maybe even different shows. Like, <sighs> Page is the wizard of recording, right? Back in the day, there were tape limitations, but see now in Digital Berg, Page, Page, Page is using. The full array of tools at his disposal, which I personally would rather him not do. Um, my personal opinion would be, and this is what I think should happen, is Jimmy Page should take the master tapes he has of this show, 22 January 1973, get it nice up and beefy in a studio, just get the sound great and just release it. It'd be like the official Led Zeppelin bootleg. And I'll bet it would just be like, mm. do you know what I mean? That's what I say. Jimmy Page, we love you. We do. So, um, but I do want to say this. This is pretty good. This is a, um, I wonder if I should just read this real fast. I think this is what I'll do. Hang on. Put on pause for a minute. Well, not pause. Uh, 
Hi there. This is the review from the Wessex scene from the January 22nd, 1973 Zeppelin show of glory at the refectory. <coughs> Roll it. Here we go. University of Southampton. For two days, Southampton was blessed with the presence of the world's top rock band. On the first, it was the turn of the town, with Led Zeppelin blowing the minds of two and a half thousand fans at the Gaumont. But the next day, our heroes came to the Union and played to us in the Black Hole of Calcutta, or Old Refectory, as it is sometimes known. The Gaumont concert had been pretty tight, but not as good as I would have expected from a band that had been on the road for the past two months. But all my doubts were dispelled the next day. I don't know if it was the atmosphere or just being right at the front of the audience, but the old refectory concert was just fantastic. There's no other word for it. They enjoyed it, and we enjoyed it, and that's all what matters. As usual, they were a bit warm to slow up. In fact, rock and roll, their opening number was very rough, and the next, The Lady, a track from Led Zeppelin V, wasn't much better either. Black Dog followed, and the audience joined in instantly on the ah, ah, ah chorus, whereas it took the Gaumont audience a couple of goes to get it right. Led Zeppelin were beginning to cook. Misty Mountain Hop and Since I've Been Loving You came next, giving John Paul Jones a chance to show us his dexterity on the keyboards. Until Loving You, Jimmy Page had been churning out the riffs to make the numbers boogie, but on this one he gave us his first solo. Very fast one second and slow the next, getting everything out of each note. Just to watch him moving his fingers up and down the fretboard made me very, very envious. He must have some natural gift. <laughs> well, I mean, he's... Dancing days and the song remains the same. Two new numbers were the next. The first, a straight rocker, very much in the Led Zeppelin style, and the second, a longish, complex number, starting and finishing with some low-tempo melodic guitar playing, and connected with the heavy rocking bit and superb organ solo from John Paul Jones. The next number, Robert Plant dedicated to the manager of the Gaumont, Dazed and Confused. This a track from their first album was used as a showpiece for Page's long guitar solo. For part of this, he used a big bow, and the highlight was when he hit the strings and got the note to echo back to him. I guess that'd probably be the, uh, what is that little tape thingy? An echoplex, perhaps? What the hell is, you know, I'm in the middle of a reed. Silence! When he'd been playing for about 10 minutes, the rest of the band joined in and stretched the number out to 25 minutes. Next was a beam of clear white light as Plant called Stairway to Heaven. Plant's vocals, which had been a bit hidden by Page's guitar before, came through beautifully. The song grad... I gotta get my horrible ersatz English... Hmm. Hang on. This is a pain in the ass. But we're going to go anyway, because the point, this is what I like about it. This is really cool. Got to love plant. Next was a beam of clear, which, which, which bad English accent was I doing? Next was a beam of clear white light as plant called, let's move it up. A, we'll make, give it a little bit more British accent talk. Next was a beam of clear white light as plant called Stairway to Heaven. Plant's vocals, which had been a bit hidden by Page's guitar before, came through beautifully, the song gradually rising to the peak of that superb rocking ending. That got everybody on their feet and shouting for every LZ number under the sun. But Plant asked everybody to shut up for a moment while he told them about his visit to the toilet. On the bog wall, he saw this name, Alan Whitehead, and this next number was dedicated to him. It was a whole lot of love. God, I love plant. I love reading these like transcriptions of what he says in these books. It's awesome. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Uh, so anyway, back to the 22nd of January, which is today. It would really be great. Seriously, man. I mean, why not? Why shouldn't Jimmy Page? You got, it's probably already, well, clearly it's already been transferred from, well, in those days, 1973. 
Well, I suppose they could have had 24 tracks on the mobile unit at that point. I mean, they probably did, but you never know. It could have been 16. But either way, it's already ready to be mixed. Just get a nice, beefy mix. Like, Don't make the drums sound like they did on like How the West Was Won. In fact, Jimmy Page is sort of How the West Was Wonized, the sound of Bonham's drums on the latest remaster of the song remains the same. Now, I love Jimmy Page. He's the man, but I consider that to be a, that is a venial sin. Jimmy, I think you should do um, 16 Hail Marys and 150 Braunars, okay? Because that's uncool. The original beefy sound of the song remains the same on vinyl as the shiznit. So anyway, so that's my suggestion. We get the 22nd January, 1973. Make a Led Zeppelin, make like an unofficial bootleg of that show. Wouldn't it be great? I mean, I'm sure it's obviously floating around. And bootleg bill. I have my stashes of bootlegs here on. I all my boot, all my Led Zeppelin like sh live show stashes are all on um, little hard drive thingies. I have to find those. They're here somewhere. Anyway, so this is what I'm doing now. Let me know about these drums. Stand by. So I've slightly changed the angle of my piping hot condenser microphone. I'm hoping now I can get a little more of the bass drum, okay? Of the kick drum, of the kick drum, of the kick drum. So here we go, get ready. And so just adjust your mic, or me, your volume knob thingies. Okay, so. better? Hang on. Hey, you gotta get the right... Trying to get that good. Well, better. So here's the main groove. Want to get one of those in? I don't know. We'll get it. But so, what do you think? Is that a little better there? I think it might be. out in the way sorry a little lull here in the maybe this wasn't that entertaining of a video but it's a video nonetheless um the drilling and installation of the drums is this week i had to make sure i had the proper drum bits because if you use the wrong drum bit bad things happen so more videos on the way george gets back from his out of town uh trip um um soon so, and a shout out to Johnny Perales. Hope I pronounced that right. Johnny or the Pope. Keep watching. He's a good little dude. Um, so this is it. One more time.
Thank you.